um, we will be moving on with our agenda and we are happy to welcome Regent Teresa Hatwathli, a board regent of Diné College, and she will provide a lecture entitled Weaving Life and Philosophy, the Significance of Navajo Cultural Arts, and we bring her a great welcome, so if we could all give her a round of applause and welcome her to our campus and a lecture here. Yeah, <laughs> Antara <laughs> Ado <laughs> Ado <laughs> 1968, Hashim's 
kontsa tāgot e ia o te ao e bīva tō le no na te e ia o e kontsa je e ia jiko o kon e ia dā te ne ha tāpe ko le ia a ko e aje e shema shije e aje e yisha aje ko alaje na ka o e o te ao e ko a te na na shi na e shinti ko a kinsa ani ki shinti be o shi a ko e de o te a ko te ko a Pahadil nishit o ni diki de ya Be Be shin nas to de Ado ti da e dan da Jahi ki da e to na Nisho da das le Silence your cell phones Ringing and Whatever noise that it makes She I wrote a few notes on here So So I just wanted to interpret some of that in 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 uh, English, I brought my family with me, my husband, and then my younger sister, uh, and then my nephew also is here with us. And I come from coal mine, Arizona, that's outside of uh, Tuba City. Um, and I was asked to be in this position to represent Western Agency six years ago. So, Aishin Aj and Nani come last last month in March. I've been here for six years. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, the president and the vice president of the Navajo Nation called my mom and my dad because of our name and so that's how they requested for somebody from our family to to be here so my father um, my father and my oldest brother are the ones that um, asked me to fulfill this position so that's how I ended up being here six years ago, uh, serving on the Board of Regents for Western Agency. My uncle, my dad's oldest brother, was Dr. Ned Hatatli. He was the first Navajo president of Navajo Community College. And this building is named after um, my, my father. So just wanted to share that little bit of history with you. So, do you quite a weaving life and philosophy, the significance of the Navajo cultural arts program. philosophy, So in English, when you talk about philosophy and in the contents that you use it can mean um, a few things and and there's very little difference but in this case as a noun the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge reality and existence especially when considered as an academic discipline Ako the next ajeshe hit ago e bayat hit o hashit ao e abik et eighteen. Ako shama e ya besi hatafli wal ye ko ho jish shija e ya jack hatafli e hot ao e biji. Ako shama e ya um a yo ut ogo hot ao ba akoni zin. Ako e aj e ya le haj shin ho jijo. It is a tan ako at all that shama. E shin pin na chin shin e ot al bahut of sin. Ako de yoki e yif e ha. E ya la in the base of the pa e long chitita ye hadi ha ye nishin de. Ago in the yo da 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 e da e ot al da e be na ye ha ya at e ye e. Yeah, be alone that shema. My mom was uh, classified as a master weaver based on the textile nature of the weaving that she did. This right here did be kwaiki e shema yi la. Did be liki e ya e le shidejin e trao e aje ya zit on. Danos ongo, it's very intricate. Uh, those eyes, those very fine, and she, my mom was a perfectionist too. Although that's a then yo, njena go skita nel, ando an skita so go do njena go skita nel go ogut ago e shema at ont eh. 
Ado apagan has angus, so I put out Jenokoya, Halian, Ado torches, though the petals need to be cushy or that a cord could you the neck at you? Aj a yan he philosophy hollo, he tessale in Napa tessale a hollo. A co shamado shija yo a ya nantin la. A co be ye shall hold necky, ye shall shish has ne'e. A a a ya, he's not a dish ne. Do a harder a not so speak it on the ladder. A shamado shija a ye shall hold ne'e a day ya. So the teaching that I want to share with you comes from my mother and my father. I didn't read it in a book, and it doesn't come from anybody else. It's easy to go to my mother because I was thinking that I was going to be a little bit of a a a a uh, between from the age of four years old, she was raised by her grandfather, her maternal grandfather, the Edgewater clan. Aya biya da hosla. Ako ada na antinit higi e shumado shje an hijo ye na hines tra. Ako e de hot a. Ako um ina e de be hot a bedet ila. Ako hajin so de be na rage e e na inskado inskado nej in hataz ago yo hot ba hosla. Ha a kishin a yat of chin the hat lay. Ha a kishin a yat chant a jin the hat lay. Ado a laid aunt aunt that a wa that edo ado a sinny that egg. Joe that eggy a beta a non dash a da a da a bashes the need and air. Ado the be a conovanabo a chum in the ado a tip and genoish a dad or to open out a bad hayan there. So years ago, um, the philosophy of our Navajo life really does have uh, the basis of it is our sheep. And the sheep is a, a sheep herder will know the terrain. And then we'll know the environment. And then we'll know where these herbs are at. And they even have the edible food. And so they have the wild onions, the wild spinach, the wild carrots, all of those. That's where these the, the sheep herder will know where those are located. Then they will also know where the dyes are to be found. And that's what they utilize for. Uh, the weaving. At one time, weaving was a livelihood. Some of you probably have mothers and fathers, grandmothers that wove. So, many years ago, weaving was what sustained life. And they used to weave these striped rugs and then they would take it to the store. As soon as it was done, they took it to the trading post and that's where they got the flour, the, the lard, the, uh, the material uh, for their clothing, whatever needs that they had. I remember growing up, they used to have kerosene lanterns and then they used to have uh, Absorbine Junior, 
some of you probably are smiling because you remember those. Yeah, and then Alka Salsa is a Beji Ovatat Aota E Yape E Nata Hajant and so back then there was no such thing as jobs in Lekha the Shi E Nanishta Holon then but here back at home that's when they they did the weaving and then they went to the trading post. And that's where they get got their material for their clothing, their um, their flour, whatever that they needed. So, so the sheep, the sheep herder was to me was very intelligent because they had to think long range. so these sheep herders had to think long range months in advance and so they had to determine and think about what type of rug are they going to make the marketability of that rug is what they had to have in mind so they decided on what color ram they're going to have, whether it's a sheep or a goat. And so that from there they can, they would be able to have their black sheep, their black wool, their brown, um, their brown uh, ram or their brown lamb or even the gray ones. And then there's the white ones. So all those different variations they use in order to make different colors of wool and then and then they had to keep track of their sheep too there's different ranges and they one thing that they really took care of was the land range management because the grass is different. So when they did this range management, that's when they knew the environment, they knew the land, they knew the herbs that grew out there. So right now the, the grass is coming out the small the little green growths when the sheep eat that a lot of times when they eat too much of it it'll <coughs> give them a diarrhea and so when they see that when they know that they already know they need to take them in a different area and so when they eat when the yaka fruits come out the stuff like that that's what they ate and so they're very bitter they're very salty a day, yeah, we go to the to the feed store and we get those salt blocks, right? And we get minerals. You shear the sheep. My mom, she used to always tell us, no. When it came down to shearing, when they, when we had to go to the sheep corral, some of us, all of us had a certain responsibility, but 
But my mom used to tell us, go sweep that area over there. Make sure there's no, there's no, um, the Bebichan, those Ilze. So it had to be nice and clear like this on the hard ground. And that's where we would shear. So we found all different ways to shear sheep. But the most important thing that my mom used to be insistent upon was to make sure that we separated the wool to make sure that there was no extra debris on the wool so that it takes that much less work to clean at a later time. <laughs> ne <laughs> Ado e hataha stiz da e ado na deilne. Ado e ado e jinako de dizle. Ado shima e ya ado na de dizle. A daft o zako. O snaha no daft o zako. Ado e jinako deit a jinako skata hana a deit a. Ado e o tota beige. Pinako de dilja o de. Ado tota beige. Ado in le hago shi in that nil card, then go shamabit in that nil card. Do da in le chis chaho da kata di kahada, e ada beta il chi, ado beta il sohuda, e ut ada, and genoco yo ya halianda, ado eta beige, ado le hard shi a fajisho e a ra and did a hi misa, e ut apa and na haya ut a e. So once we were done with the shearing, we had to uh, card the wool. We were young at that time, but my mom used to always tell us, keep busy. Don't have idle hands. Don't have idle thoughts. You know, you sit there. A lot of times kids today, they say, I'm bored. That's, that was the thing that she said. You're not supposed to say that. Um, that's, you're asking for poverty. You're asking for hardship. You know, to be idle. So once uh, the carding was done, then we had to prepare it in a different way. So that kahastiz is when their, the wool is actually uh, a bit thicker and fatter um, than the regular wool that you're going to weave with. And then once that's done, then uh, you have to go through a process of a spinning it again. But my mother used to spin it again, and then she would roll it with water so it would be nice and thin uh, and fine. That's how she used to uh, use for her weaving. And then when we were, were done, we, we would be done with that, then we would have to put them, uh, wind them like this. And then once we were done with that, then she would, early in the morning, we would get up and we would start boiling water, building fires outside and we start boiling water. So everywhere that we went with her, she was always looking for plants to use to dye the wool. So all different types of plants. And so some of them were, um, well, I think you've seen some of those um, dyeing charts. And they had the, the variation of colors. 
And it didn't just happen one time during the year. It was a long, a whole year process. So growing up, we used to live in coal mine, but we used to haul wood from Black Mesa. And when we went, she would tell us and show us which were plants to use for dyeing. So we would collect those. And on that day, while that water is boiling, that's when she would put those herbs in there. And it would boil and boil. Then at a certain point, she would strain the herbs out. Then we would put those skeins of wool into the water. And every once in a while she would turn it. She would keep turning it so that the color doesn't just sink to the bottom and the wool at the bottom will not be a darker color than the ones on top. So when she was done, when we were done with that, um, then she would take them out and then she would hang them. And a lot of times she handled the wool herself and we were just her helpers. And now I understand why she used to do that. Um, because a lot of times if you don't know how to do it, you can actually, um, it won't be consistent and you can, you can tell the difference when you utilize the wool. So <clears throat> that was the dyeing process. Uh, the preparation of the wool. Ado e hashin zach nahan jisho e the chin de le le hashin the cha. A shi ko at the pen nil te. A ta nil se ya ta i ta le an ni ta chi ko ta e le khe je in ta hal jisho zhe de kwa ke ho jisho ta e ya the pen ya je ta hal le to is ya je. ako <laughs> <laughs> I called Pana Eat, so in here, the Halo. Oh, you now, I called Chinny Ajin Hin, Hal Chinna, Yo, with Tan Jonah. I called Ethat Nap Ado de Yadala, Chinny Ajin. I called them at Sa A, Yo, with that can't let it go. I called Ehud A, Epo, Ah, and Air, Ah, Quitchin, Ah, or Athi, I know Carthy, A, up in that, and Tin Holo, but I wouldn't need Shamado Shaja. A ado e hash e e gil to ado in le tors a genis of e arj e quae gil to de koto ye hat no de zitolia de a chi adon lege so ado hash e e gil to dis in inke ado an le at sea in the hash at all nature a kate that don't is jay also adon le records don't just a house don't le. But <laughs> 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 So sometimes during this process, we got hungry. And being mutton eaters, we had to learn how to butcher when we were very young. So ever since we were small, we had a role in everything my parents did. So when we were young, it was like, hold this leg, pull it like this, and hit the no, that, you know, hold it right here, but like cut it right here, you know. Now, if you did that, they'll say it's an a safety issue to have a knife around a young child. <laughs> Somebody called OSHA or something. So, a kodishji de edo de tinida. A ko a a de. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Edo da do ni dan de. A ko. So, from that point on, uh, when we were young, we had to learn how to butcher. And then sometimes during the winter time, uh, the little baby lambs and the goats would freeze. And so when they froze, it never went to waste. 
they were given to us and that we were told learn how to butcher on them and so we had to butcher that little frozen by that time they're not all frozen stiff or anything like that so um, we had to learn how to butcher on that and my mom and my dad were there a lot of times it was my mom it wasn't always my dad um, but my mom is the one that um, told us that that's what we needed to learn and then um, no, that's that's how you're going to sustain your life. That's what they told us. And so, when they when we did that, uh, when we had skinned that lamb or that goat, then it was cooked, and then we ate it. I don't know how many of you would eat a little tiny little sheep or goat. Probably not. Can you imagine trying to chew on that rib? <laughs> so a lot of kids. That's what they do today. You know. When there's mutton, I want the rib, I want the rib. When we were young, we were told, you cannot eat the rib. You don't eat the rib unless you you hurt sheep. Accord. To this day, parents, they say, well, I want to get a rib for my child. And that child's like five years old. What do they know about being having a rib? You know, I don't know. But my favorite piece is the etzeka, so. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't really bother with the rib, but um, that's what, that's how we learned how to butcher. Um, although, eh, y'all, eh, oh, eh, 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 uh, yeah, I wouldn't send it. i like, yo, yeah, I had yon that she yon. Ko <laughs> Oh, what are you not hinting that you ma? A call. A shin, what are she in Hishin, a month and a finishing? A what are she in his bed a husband? A call. A jashin is cheated, just isn't there. A cheated go de yan, de yan de. A what end the aya ye in the nature. Ado aya ye a benachet is the husband. Ado she yan a can't let. A conle had the McDonald's, the Lenny's, the Jerrods, at the door, to the door, your open national child, a la. Asian lay in that is Asian daughter, though she owned on up at the nest. So, when my mother, when we were growing up, when uh, we butchered, she used to always tell us about the, the meat and how to prepare food. And so she told us that what you think about and how you feel and how you pray and to cook for your children, your family, your siblings, your visitors, that's what you utilize in that cooking process. So you instill that. It's infused in your cooking. And so when you serve your food, even if it's just a little bit and people consume that, it will be filling and then they will feel that positive energy in their body, their hearts, and their mind. They'll be energetic and they'll be happy. That's what she used to tell us. And so, but when you go to McDonald's or to Denny's, you don't feel like that, right? You just drive in, get your food. As you're driving down the road, you eat your food. You know, that doesn't really fill you up and that, that doesn't give you that loving feeling. So, <clears throat> So home cooked meal, that's the one thing that my mom was very insistent on. Every single day we had to cook. And so even for our kids, as we got older, she used to tell us, cook for your kids, you know. 
Um, yeah, every once in a while we had pizza, but you know, majority of the time it was cooking at home. And so the and then the kids they learn the value of that. They see the difference, and then they learn how to cook too. And so that's how my parents taught us. So the life story of a weaver. That's what. That's the story of my mom. And so the award that's being presented today is the Master Weaver Award. That's an honor of my mother. And so she wove into uh, when she became uh, very elderly. She continued to weave. And so she used to always tell me that, <clears throat> that the weaving tools is what's going to protect you. It's going to protect your mind, your body, and your spirit. And so I always think about that. And it protects you against hunger. It protects you against laziness. And it protects you against the evils, the negativity of life. And you keep yourself um, motivated so that you can enjoy uh, setting up your looms and you can infuse it with your teachings um, at, in an everyday life. So today we do have some weavers that are still out there. How many of you weave? Oh, uh, one of the challenges that we have today is that we are not reteaching our younger generation. ออโดเอคุตะอมาโดเอเอคุตะฮะโลอโคเอชิงเปนนาโอยูเจเออโดเอยาเยนตะโฮสอาตะอโคเดเอติคุเอเอเปนนาโดอาทะโนอโดนเ
So I wanted to share that this bit Zoe Kwaegis Atanigi A belonged to my father's Biji. And she's the one that raised my father. And so her name was Laila Tachitni. And she passed when I was 13 years old. And then this weaving comb that's here was my mother's. So when you look at the fine tooth that indicates that that she wove textiles, so very fine weaving. And then the bottom comb is my my um, bed zoe. So it kind of looks like it's not used very often. <laughs> and then the the wool that's in here is wool that my mother um, prepared from shearing all the way to the end product. And so those are some of the ones that um, she didn't um, completely use all of. So I only have a very few today. And so whenever I weave, I always try to incorporate a little bit here and there. And a lot of times it reminds me of what my mother told me, the stories that she told me. And there's a very distinct sound of a rug Ado <laughs> Ado <laughs> Ado ehuna hat a hale. Ado eha laid out to know the corn that been a yet ado let the hajin tha, ado pinches nisha, e in na a kuche, 
the better be kept your guard of them. Be it cheer the hashing card of them, a jetis the shmayo what's in that nuns card of unnet nuns card of see the yen nuns card of our co avat your jitahashi, a tisla anarago. Oko eo hut argo e e pinchit nishla. Ado and the sea has sin. Deep anjunako a chief in her. She jaha she nat in yo ya hidden zinclent and Johnny yet eat up it. Big a chill baby in jizum hadoma she nay of so slack. Got a hand nanny lay cochico, ado cochico, ado nan a cook quacky quacky in Junoko. Is a quite genuine neat. My father would used to do that, you know, these verbs, these words that are sitting right here, you have thinking to the east. And so you think about what am I going to produce? What am I going to do? What am I going to pro What am I going to accomplish in life or even in a rug? And so when you think about that, then it becomes, you implement it into your planning. You think about how am I going to do this, where am I going to go, you do your assessments, and then you start going about it. So whether you're preparing wool, or you're filling out applications, or whatever, um, your scholarship applications, whatever it may be, then you implement it into your life whether you need to go on the computer and do your scholarship paperwork or you're actually going to re weave that rug. And so when it's completed, then that's the part up to the time that it's completed. That's the enough part of it, the life part of it, what you implement into your life, how you're going to work and accomplishment in your everyday life. That's enough. And then when it's done, that's, that's your assessment. And so that's when you're able to determine if this is the pro product that you wanted. And so my father used to just appreciate rugs. And so my mom used to say that when, you, when it's complete, there's rules. There's a lot of rules. There's, you talk about policy, procedure, laws, it's all right here. That you, it starts from day one. And so my mom used to say that you're not supposed to weave at night because you have to protect your eyes. Then she used to say that you're not supposed to weave when it's raining. And so when you look at this right here, it represents the, the rain right here, the female rain. Although it represents your hair too, the female rain. She always had all these teachings for us. And so she told us that you're not supposed to do that at night. And so when you're done with it, my mom used to have all these teachings and she used to say that when you complete your loom, you're not supposed to take it, to complete it at night. It has to be done while that sunlight is still here. So when you're done with it, you take it out you take it off and you take it outside into the sunlight and then you shake it out there. You give it life. The sun will, will anoint it and then it'll have life and then it'll have its sound and it'll, it'll ripple through the atmosphere out there. And so that's how you give your rugs life. That's what she used to tell me. And so... When you're done with it, you look at it. And my father used to do that. Is he used to get a, the rug and he would fold it this way. And then he would fold it this way too. And then right here at this corner should be the exact corner, the exact middle. So all these designs should line up this way. Then they all line up this way. Then they all line up this way. And all the points should be able to meet. 
I can safely say that some of my rugs <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> so my first rug that I wove, I was five years old, and that rug hung hangs in my house today. And so it's yellow like a bumblebee. It's all striped and everything. So <laughs> it's my pride and joy. It sits way up there, the the, the highest point of my home. So, um, so those, I think I was probably. I don't know, maybe in my 20s when my, when my mom gave that rug back to me. So I still have that. Um, my dad used to always um, tease me about it. Uh, I used to have this nully man that used to come over and tease me all the time. Tease all of us. And so like, they should null it as though. So in our culture, you know, our grandparents and our paternal grandparents, they play a vital role in our in our culture, your your maternal grandparents are there to teach you, and then they'll get after you too. They'll discipline you, but your nullies, a eh, they express love to you. They tease you about so they build confidence in you, and so they'll say, "Don't be looking at all those guys over there," you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like my nully, he says that right here. Uh, Dr. Wilson <coughs> um, I always, always feel great when I walk away from him. He's always full of a lot of compliments. And, um, and that's how you're supposed to communicate with your nully. And we had a nully that used to do that. And so my rug starts off all perfect like this, then it goes in like this, and then it goes like this. And the strings at the top are long on both sides. And then my dad used to say, the Asian nullipitless souls. He used to say that. Is that your, your paternal grandfather's uh, loincloth? You know, he used to say that. And, and um, I, always, I always talk about I always tell my kids about it. So. Um, so stuff like that, your father can tease you about yashchine and their father's side, so they can tease you like that. So going forward, you have your sihasen, ado, you have your ayo otne. All of this stuff that I told you about, the, the philosophy of life, which is in our culture is sheep. Sheep is life, you hear that all over. Because you look at the horse, you can't shear that horse, right? You can only eat that horse during the winter time, right? And and you can't go and and use the hide to sleep on, you know. And so my dad used to tell us that Hayat that's what he said. And so you're even taught how to do that at a very young age. And so a lot of young people, they don't know how to do that. And, and I think probably some of them, they think it smells. So you, you learn that on the sheep skin and then on the goat skin. It protects us too. <laughs> like I said earlier this evening, my mother used to be a very fine tapestry weaver. So when you talk about sheep is life, the sheep is the one that's going to feed you consistently throughout the year. And it's also going to provide you with an income that will give you food, that will give you materialistic things that you may want for yourself and for your kids, for your family. So they have it has a song, it has a prayer. Ado Ado the Nek Ajeto Kujito Kadidin Bizanta Ji is the Uhut at the Battle Sin 
ไอ้ยาไอ้หุดเอาอตันซีเคสอาโดเอออายัดเอกิตเอาเอเปยีตาโตเลนาสจิโกอาโดนขะอัชเนสโตนเฮโยเนยูเดนิโนหุดเอา
that's the most challenging. You, you, at one point, you just want to just make it all one color, just pull it all the way through. But you have to be very tedious, because you want to do quality work too. If you want to do something, you have to stamp it with your signature. And so that's quality. So there's a difference between quantity and quality. And I think we all know that difference. So when you do that, you sacrifice your time. So even though you're studying, your buddies say, let's go to the movies. You're like, oh, you want to go. I'll treat you out, buy your popcorn. No. <clears throat> Same thing over here. You know, you may want to go do something else. You want to go shopping or whatever the case may be. But you have to, you have to sacrifice that time. It's called an opportunity cost. You, you work at this right now, whatever your goal is, right now. When you're done, then years down the road or whatever, then you can do whatever it is that you didn't do at this point. And so that's sacrificing yourself. So sometimes you may get hungry, but you don't want to leave right here because you might lose your train of thought. It's so fun to start a rug from the beginning. Then you have to flip it around and you have to you have to copy the other side of the design. And so the most challenging part is at the end. So that's discipline. That's sacrifice. And so and so throughout all this process, is, is you learn what type of personality you have. You're molded through this whole process. And so when I was small, my mom used to say, Sinta, Sinta, at oh. She used to say that. That's what we were told. Or out ak ah ta ok ah. That, and as little kids, we had to weave. Learn how to weave. Don't just go out and take off and play. And complete your, your grinding. Don't just go out and play. But the time we sure played a lot was when we used to hurt the sheep. Sometimes the sheep used to come back before us. <laughs> I think everybody's done that. <laughs> so through this love, this is love, this teaching that comes from your mom and your dad, from your culture. And that teaches you to love yourself. And through this process comes faith. You have faith in yourself. And then you learn faith too because it has songs and it has prayers, it has stories. All of this, there's so much significance right here. One of the things that my mom used to tell me was, I don't know, I don't think it's here. You're not supposed to have it in there. That's what she used to tell me. And I'm like, what is that? So sometimes I used to put in there when she wasn't looking and I used to sit there try to sneak. But my loom never got higher and I couldn't understand that. But up here, she was very creative in how she taught my, my father also. And so it opened up an imagination. I didn't have an imaginary friend. That's not what I'm saying. It opened up many avenues of imagination and creativity. Like for me, I'm Pipitodne. And so Deer Springs clan. The personality traits are creativity. So, and, and you learn all of that through this right here, our teachings of our parents, our grandparents. And so, although they say that we make good teachers, so I hope you all learned something today, this evening. So, one of the things that my mom always told me that there's always fruits to your labor. I'm not talking about a child, I'm talking about work. <laughs> So, my dad used to tell me that even with these songs right here, there's a verse in there. It says, Shilk e a yid jishko do shil nde nashta. 
And so it's like a ripple. You go to a pond and you drop that pebble and those ripples happen and it keeps going and going and going and it doesn't ever recede and that's what that verse means it's applicable in creativity it's applicable in your life it's applicable in your faith is to have that constant growth but it comes with asking questions so there's one more thing that he always told me you know you hear this verse all the time they say what does that mean they always say but it's very broad and sometimes people sit there what does that mean how do you apply that but my father used to tell me that's what he told me my my mother told me that that's what he said and so my father was not Mm. I only remember one time my, my, my father spanked me. That was when I was very young. I had four brothers, that's why he spanked me, just to let you know. Um, I had four older brothers, then it was me. So, um, my, my father used to... He didn't get after us. He didn't say... Um, he didn't say that. He never got after us like that. He never raised his voice at us. But when he spoke, it was in a tone and in a way that if somebody were to come up to you or grab you by the tie, shake you up and sit you straight. That's the way my father spoke. And so that's how he was. He was a very gentle man with a very um, gentle demeanor but when you catch his eye he's got something to say he'll say it but he'll always tell you that and so it's a sense of empowerment and you take ownership of it whereas is all of you but when somebody says, then that person empowers you. And when your own parent does that to you, it's like a blessing. They bless you. And so they have confidence in you. And you have confidence. And you're competent. And so that's something that um, I wanted to share with you. And then when we think about <coughs> nation building, oh, you and about the hadith. They talk about infrastructure, they talk about investments, but what about an investment in this? Why can't we have business incubators for the people that want to keep this alive? There's a worldwide market <coughs> for this. And I only say that because I myself have my own business. I have a website and I ship worldwide. So all you college students, you don't need an 8 to 5 job. You don't need a part-time job. Just do this and put it on the internet because I bet you all of you have this. And I think there's free Wi-Fi somewhere here on campus. <laughs> so I know. The other thing that's something to think about and I think it's going to take a majority to make that difference is why can't we exercise sovereignty to patent what we have I go to a lot of these touristy stores and you see baskets that are made in India, in Indonesia, that have our patterns on it. These Navajo rug designs are being duplicated. They're infused into Italian fine rugs, Mexican rugs, and they're being labeled as native inspired. Navajo inspired and for those people that can't distinguish the difference they will pay top money for it whereas it should be here and so that's my two cents 
Today, there's a legislation that died in Navajo Nation Council trying to change the name from Navajo Nation to Diné Nation. So, I think we need to really rethink how we use our time and our money. And I think using sovereignty to bring some of these resources back to our own people should be a priority. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Uh, the philosophy of weaving is, the foundation of it is already here. In Tsaakis, Nahat'a'i, Nasi, Hassan. Ayo o'tnit, ado o'tla, e hut'a. Everything, all four cardinal directions, the mountains, the dindin, all of that is infused. It's all infused in the rug. It instills competency. And then, So that's a very good trait to have. So I wanted to um, share with that with uh, everybody here. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I don't think so, because I think I told you everything. <laughs> I won't sing a song because that's, that's... My dad used to always tell us, There's a very small portion that you don't share with others. That's what he told me. So those, my, my songs, I only share that with my children. So... But I actually recorded verses of it, just talking about it here for Dinah College to use. So it was a hiha.